everybody. Um, this is Cece and Elizabeth from Crisis Center of West Texas joining you for another Friday video. This week we're going to be talking a little bit about self-care. Okay guys, so we're going to jump right in. Um, we're going to start with a breathing exercise that uh, can be useful to everybody. So you can put up your hand, we'll kind of demonstrate for y'all, and get your other hand with your index finger. So what you're going to do is you are going to trace your hand up and through your fingers. So each time you go up a finger, you're going to be breathing in. At the top of your fingers, you're going to be pausing. You go back down. In between your fingers, you're going to pause. And then you're going to breathe in, pause, breathe out, pause. Okay, so let's give that a try. Here we go, breathing in. Pause, breathe out. Pause. Breathe in. Okay, good job. So the reason why we wanted to do that take five activity is because we are talking about self-care today. So self-care is really, really important. Um, let's talk a little bit about what self-care is. So I feel like we hear that word a lot. What is self-care? Um, so self-care is really unique to each person. It means just doing something that makes you happy and maybe calms you down a little bit. So self-care for one person could be grabbing a book and sitting on the couch and reading or self-care for another person could be going to the grocery store without kids or without anybody else, right? <laughs> so um, self-care is so unique to each person. A few things that everybody can do for self-care is one, deep breathing. That exercise that we did, that can be for kids, older adults, um, anybody really. And if you Google um, breathing exercises, you'll find a lot of results. Another thing you can do is meditation. So meditation is just taking a few minutes for yourself, maybe closing your eyes, being in a comfortable space, and you could be sitting or laying down and just breathing and just calming your mind. So there's a few resources to find some meditation. Of course, you can Google it, just like everything else, and you'll find a lot of exercises. But also there's a few apps that I recommend. One is called Headspace, and the other one is called Calm. So those are both free apps that you can download on your iPhone or Android, and they have free meditation exercises. So I, I hope that everybody this week or today takes a few minutes for themselves and practices um, some self-care. Yeah, thanks, Cece. Um, we also received some information from a local Texas domestic violence agency, a partner of ours called Brighter Tomorrows, and they gave some suggestions for practicing self-care now that you might be home with family members, with partners that you're not usually spending as much time with. So um, they had a couple of suggestions. One is trying to take time in your own space if you can. So if you want to sit out on the porch while your partner's inside or in one part of the house and your partner's in another, taking time separately. Also just keeping with a consistent schedule. So if you're used to being at work and your kids are at school, still trying to keep up that consistent schedule so that everybody feels those daily rhythms can be helpful. And then finally, taking time with your partner to discuss things you need um, or want kind of during this time at home more. Um, however, we recognize that people who are living with abusive partners, that this might not be possible for them. So we want to emphasize the need um, for safety planning if you are with an abusive partner at home more during this time. So um, the agency Sanctuary for Families put out an article called Safety Planning During COVID-19 Tips for Survivors from Survivors. And they suggest um, possibly, you know, if you are having to be home more, find the safest room in your house, the house with the most exits, the house where you have access to the phone, and try to spend as much time as possible in that room. Also identify a buddy or a couple buddies that you can be in touch with during this process, update them with how things are going, maybe even develop a code word with them if you are wanting someone to intervene if things escalate to a certain point. So um, one of our um, contributors, Jen, asked a question on our last video about how to support survivors. So if you're asked to be that buddy, please do so. But also allow a friend of yours who may be a survivor to make some of their own choices about safety planning. We want to empower people acknowledging they know their relationship best um, and allowing them to make that safety plan and just join with them if they ask you. Um, if you or someone you love is looking for more safety planning, our hotline is available 24 seven. 
helpless safety planning and our services are available to survivors. Again, that number is 866-627-4747. So that is um, what we have for you on self-care. You can feel free to ask more questions, engage with us through comments um, or direct messages. Um, but to put all this self-care into practice, we're going to be hosting a virtual self-care bingo on Monday, March 30th from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. on Facebook. So feel free to join us for some family-friendly fun as we help take care of each other during this strange time. So that's it for now, everybody. Again, feel free to reach out to us, um, comment, direct message us, email us at elizabeth at ccwtx.org. And um, take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Thank you.